Hi everybody, it's Terry. Today I'm going to show you how to take a uh, set of DICOM files from a CT scan and convert them to a point cloud, like the uh, model I have displayed here on Sketchfab. I've had uh, a bunch of people ask me how to do it, um, so I'm going to show you how with free software. And the data that we'll be using is from the Visible Human Female, and I'll provide a link uh, to get those files as well. Um, you might be wondering why I did this. Um, and it's not just because it looks cool. I mean, it does, but it was also functional. Um, I was asked to render some DICOMs for a client and the slice thicknesses were very, very large. And so trying to make a surface model of the features of interest was, it was just kind of difficult and I felt like it was gonna be obscuring the relevant information. So ideally I wanted a way to display just the volume rendering so that there's you know, less interpretation on my part of what's relevant and what's not um, to just be able to provide the whole 3D volume rendering because that looked fine. Even though the slice thicknesses were large, it kind of, if you adjusted it right, it still looked um, interesting and showed what it needed to. And so that was the reason for doing this in the first place. And um, I also needed the file to be something quickly readable and accessible. And so Hosting it privately on Sketchfab was kind of the ideal solution that didn't require the client to do any, you know, dragging and dropping of files into some special interface. It would just be ready to go um, and visible. So that's what I'm going to show you here, and um, I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing we need is the Paraview software, which is free to download. I'll provide a link in the description. And we're going to import, import our uh, DICOM files into here. So I have a folder <clears throat> on my desktop with the entire um, set of DICOM. So this is the DICOM files that make up the head of the visible human female. And we only need to grab the first one. You'll see that they're numbered <clears throat> in order. So I'm just going to grab the first one and drop it in. And then we get this dialog here that asks if we want to read the whole directory or just a single file. Um, but we want to read the whole directory, so it'll import all the images in that folder. And here you'll notice the little eye is closed. We're not seeing anything in the 3D viewer yet. We need to click Apply. The little eye opens up. <clears throat> and right here under representation, you'll see the first thing it's showing is outline, so it's not, it's just showing the outline of of the volume. We want to switch this to volume. So we basically get um, a volume rendering. <clears throat> here it is. We get this color map editor over here on the side that we can use to adjust um, opacity of different parts and we can also change the color. If for some reason you um, the color map editor is not here, so I'm going to close this. <clears throat> Look back down over here on your left hand side under coloring and click edit and you'll get that open back up. Um, so what I did here was I, I just grabbed uh, a part of the line um, on the histogram here and dropped it down to zero so that means the values, <clears throat> any values in the volume below this value are going to be um, transparent or invisible and we can kind of slide this along and see how it changes. Um, we can also adjust the um, color maps that are used from this drop down right here that says mapping data. And there's the turbo. <clears throat> there's one here called rainbow uniform. This looks like um, the color map that I used for my Sketchfab um, point cloud. Um, you can see also there's a an invert button right here, invert the transfer function. So this will just invert the color range. So it gives you a few more options um, for display. And so I'm gonna adjust this little scale a little more and take a note of the value here. Um, that your cursor's on, you'll notice that it's output down here under the data um, field as well, because we're going to use that to 
crop the volume to only the uh, voxels representing bone. Okay, so I'm going to record that value 229.681. So now what we want to do to get rid of um, the rest of the voxels that make up the CT volume, if we want to get rid of the soft tissue, we're going to go up here to this toolbar and we're going to use this little cube right here that says clip. We'll click on that. You'll notice the first thing that pops up in the 3D viewer is a plane. And if we look here on the left hand side under clip type, it says plane, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to clip it, you know, through the skull. We want the whole volume. So we're going to use scalar and we're going to put in that vol the, um, that number that was in our color map up here, 229.681. So let's go back to the clip. Okay, back to the clip. So we're gonna do a scalar clip and right here under value, we're gonna put in the value that we um, made in our color map, 229.681. And uh, I don't know why this invert um, box is checked by default, but if we invert that, that means it's going to delete everything above 229 and keep everything below it, but that's not what we want. We want the bone values, which are gonna be higher than 229. So we need to uncheck that and then click apply. So I'm gonna hide the original volume here. And you'll notice that the, let's go down here to properties, um, representation, surface. So that's automatically what it's gonna to switch to, but we wanna see it as a volume. So just give it a few seconds to load it as um, a volume rendering. There we go. If you're happy with this color scale that you set, you can just leave it as is, or you can continue to play with it if you want. Um, so now we wanna convert this to the point cloud. So we can go up to filters. The filters menu is huge. Um, let's just go alphabetical, and we're gonna look for the filter that says convert to point cloud. Okay, and um, remember it's, it's not shown by default. We actually have to click apply for it to apply the filter to our clip. And there it is. So at this point, we can just export this. Again, you can change the color, um, <clears throat> color ramp if you want. I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna say file, save data. And I'm just gonna save it on the desktop and I'm gonna save it as a PLY point cloud. And we'll just call this VH, VHF PC. Um, and there's a whole bunch of options here. We don't have time, you know, time steps or anything like that. Um, we do want to enable the color. And this also asks whether or not you want to enable the alpha. Because <clears throat> remember, everything is sort of set over here with our color map editor on a, on a scale from transparent to opaque. Um, so we can just go ahead and enable that and click OK. Okay, so now we want to clean up the point cloud <clears throat> and um, we're going to use Mesh Lab to do that. So I'm going to grab the point cloud that we saved and just drop it in here. Um, I'm going to get rid of this trackball, so just go view trackball. <clears throat> and you'll notice over here on the right hand um, <clears throat> layer dialog. It's a point cloud, so it's being viewed, viewed as a point cloud. Um, you have some other options down here. 
we can adjust the size of the points. Um, we can also use the dot decorator, which just makes them look like little spheres rather than little pixels. Um, <clears throat> we'll make those maybe a little bit bigger. You notice that we have some floaty things um, that we want to get rid of. And there also kind of seems to be <clears throat> a layer of orange pixels on the outside. So I'll show you how we can select for those. So first I'm going to get rid of some of these little floaty things. <clears throat> so we're going to use this uh, option up here, select vertices. And you can just draw a little box around what you want to delete. Here we're, we're only selecting vertices. There's no triangles. So we can just use this button up here that says delete selected vertices. Anything that's selected um, is highlighted red. So we can kind of keep doing that. <clears throat> if we hold down the control button, then it lets you select uh, a little more. Remember this selects in 3D, so anything behind your box gets selected. So you need to, every once in a while, you need to rotate your model around. Okay. Those, these are the main things that I'm going to get rid of. If you do accidentally select too much, you can either, you'll notice up here, you've got a little help box. You can hold the shift key to subtract, or you can also just kind of just click out of it um and just reselect if you reselect it uh a new box if you start a new box then it's going to basically deselect what you had selected before <clears throat> so it gets to be kind of quick it can be very quick once you get the hang of it delete okay so i'm not going to bother with uh all of these other things but I am going to show you how to select this layer of orange that's on the outside. <clears throat> I'm going to make the points a little bit bigger. And there's this little info button <clears throat> up here. And it'll give you information about either a triangle or a vertex that you selected. <clears throat> so I'm going to click info. And I'm just going to click. <clears throat> we need to select a T for vertex. T because we're just selecting a point. So this gives you the index number of the vertex, the XYZ coordinates, and the color. So we can make a note of that color because that's because now we can select um, by that. So I'm going to write it down. 255, 182, 55 with an alpha of 17. <clears throat> and click the I to get back out of it. <clears throat> now we're going to go filters, select. <clears throat> select faces by color. And here's the dialog that pops up. <clears throat> we have an RGB um, alpha value. So we're going to change this color space to RGB. And then we're going to click on the black box so that we can put in the exact values. <clears throat> so we need to put in red of 255, green of 182, blue of 55, and an alpha of 17. Okay. And we can select preview um, so it'll show us which pixels are being selected. So let's click preview. And you see it, it looks like it's covering the whole skull, but if you zoom in, you can see that it's just that outer layer of orange that's selected. So we're going to click Apply to actually select those. 
Um, and you could, at this point, you could go up and delect, uh, delete the selected vertices since they're highlighted in red, or we can right click on the name of your layer here and say move selected vertices to another layer. Delete original selection, yes. And now you can see if we turn off the original mesh, it's basically just that orange that got selected. Turn that off and look at our original here. And we got rid of all of that orange. Might have gotten rid of a little bit too much. So now you can go through and you can do a little more cleanup if you want. Um, if you don't like what you did, then it's pretty easy to just go and reload um, your original mesh if you want. Or you can actually just combine these two back together um, if you wanted. Or you can kind of look around in the orange and see. It does seem to have selected some yellow as well. If you want to recombine these two, then we can, uh, again, it's right click on one of the layers and we can say flatten visible layers. Click apply and then it's just resaved. And in fact, we should save this anyways as edited since we edited all those little floaty bits out. Okay, that's fine as is. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try this again and see if I might have done something to make it select too much. Go back to RGB and put our color, 255, 182, 55, 17. Let's just uncheck the inclusive selection, select preview, and you know what? I think it's this variation here. I'm going to move the variation all the way down. So it's just selecting that value that I put in, or you can adjust it slightly up. I think it was adjusted too high, so it was selecting way too much. Click Apply. Again, right-click, move selected vertices to another layer. That looks better. There's still quite a bit of orange. I'd rather be uh, more conservative with what's selected and deleted and then just kind of go through it iteratively. a little bigger. So you can either, you know, again, click T, find another value, or we can enter the same value that we had and just adjust that variation. 255, 182, 55. 17. And I'm actually going to set the variation on the red to zero. Oops, preview. And let's shift these down. And try that. And we'll move those again to another layer. Still didn't remove a whole lot, did I? So let's just go ahead and pick one of these. And write that down, 255, 158, 55 and zero. Okay, that's what we're missing, the alpha zero. So let's get rid of that. Okay. 
Preview. That might be better. It looks like it's selecting a lot of the outside, so let's click Apply. I can live with that. Still a little bit of the orange, but it's not too bad. <clears throat> So I'm going to export this, File, Export, Mesh, Edited, 2. Save, Color, Normal, Binary, OK. So now that you've gotten your point cloud where you want it, you want to get it up into Sketchfab. So this is my... Um, original model here. So I'll just go into the 3D settings and show you um, how it looks. When you upload a point cloud, you get um, an extra little dialog over here on the left for point cloud, and you can adjust the size. Um, because we have vertex color saved, we want that to display. Otherwise, you're not, it's just going to be one color. And then you can set your background as usual to whatever you want. Um, let's see, lighting, we don't need to adjust so much. <clears throat> Under material, um, you can choose whether or not to have opacity and you can play around with these uh, different options. I liked the blending um, and you can adjust the scale. Put this back to where I had it so it's not the same. I mean, so it stays the same. Um, another thing to look at uh, with the point cloud is the anti-aliasing here. Um, and you can either turn it on or off. Um, this looked better off to me, um, but you can adjust it to how you want. And then, of course, you need to save your view. Um, and that's really it. Um, so you can now make your own uh, point cloud from a CT volume that basically resembles a volume rendering from a CT scan, but with points. Um, and then you can edit it down and make it pretty for Sketchfab.